Hey John, did you like Dora Hedora? Hell yes I did. Who would you recommend it to? I have no fucking clue. Okay, where to start with this one? Um, let me just say that I knew. I knew what I was getting into. I did my research. I knew that it was technically a comedy, like a dark comedy. I knew that it wasn't going to be Berserk style action. I knew that it wasn't going to be Blam style confusion and world building, I guess. And I was still not prepared for what this is. I don't even know how to approach this walkthrough. Um, this might be a little bit more, I don't know, chaotic than the other ones, considering that, you know, this is the epitome of chaos. The whole damn thing. I mean, do I go beat by beat? Because if I do, you're, all our heads will be spinning. Do I stop on every single joke that landed that literally had me pause reading just so I could can gather myself together because I was literally laughing too hard? Because we will be here all God day if I do that. And let's be fair. I did expect, I knew it was supposed to be funny and I did expect to laugh or chuckle here and there as I read it. Because I figured it'd be a lighter story, lighter in the sense of less heavy issues that you're dealing with as the story goes on. Which is true, by the way. It is very light as far as in, in that sense. I mean, it's lighter than both Berserk and Blam. But what I didn't expect was to laugh as hard as I did, as often as I did. And just the sheer depravity that is baked into the humor in this manga and the manga in general as a whole cannot be overstated. It's fucking hilarious. Anyway, let's just get started. Kaiman has somebody's head in his mouth. And this is our first panel. And what is it with manga and the first panel being completely batshit crazy? I mean, we started Berserk with guts fucking a demon. And now we start this one with this. Anyway, we see what the guy sees inside of Kaiman's head. And there's a human head inside of Kaiman's lizard head. And it looks at the guy and it says, you aren't the one. Meanwhile, there's another guy pointing his finger at him like it's a gun. And he's going to shoot him or something with his finger. When Nikaido runs up and just flicks it. And <laughs> it just kind of snaps. And I'm just sitting there like, this is stupid. This is stupid. This shouldn't be funny. Why the f*** am I laughing right now? Because it just looks so ridiculous. Anyway... Nikaido proceeds to kick the shit out of the guy with the big nose. And Kaiman takes the other guy's head out of his mouth and asks him what the head inside of his head said to him. And the guy says, you aren't the one, so Kaiman proceeds to murder him. And then, big nose guy magics up a door and gets away. Now this scene's going to do a couple of things. Obviously, it's going to introduce our main characters of Nikaido and Kaiman. It's also going to let us in on pretty much the main mystery of the story, and that is, there is a head inside of his head or at least a head in his mouth or his throat or his neck or there's a person inside of him the logistics of how that works aren't really explained it looks like it's a head but later on it's gonna look like a whole person it's weird it doesn't really make sense but it doesn't really have to in this particular <laughs> manga nothing makes sense let's we'll get there oh my god anyway let's listen in on the main story or the main mystery of we're looking for the sorcerer who did this to Kaiman because prior to this happening, he has no memory. His memories of before this have been erased or are gone. Maybe he didn't exist prior to this, huh? Huh? These are thoughts I have. I don't know. Maybe the man inside is the real him and he's just a suit that the man inside is wearing around like a curse that the man inside had put on. Who fucking knows? But apparently, the other thing it introduces us to is apparently he can't hear. What the, what the man inside of his mouth says to these people because he has to pull them out and ask them what the guy in said. So you can't hear what's being said inside of your own f***ing head, which is crazy. Secondly, 
because he can't hear what's being said inside of his own mouth, he then has to rely on these people telling him what the guy inside of his mouth said. This is a horribly inefficient way of figuring out who the sorcerer that, that, that did this to you is. Just say it. Anyway, we're going to head back to Nikaido's restaurant. And on the way back, we're going to learn this world is called the Hole. And it is connected to another world. And that world is the Sorcerer's World. If it has a name, I missed it. And the Sorcerers can create these magic doors where they go back and forth between the two worlds. But the people in the Hole are just kind of stuck in the Hole. And the Sorcerers come over here and they practice or experiment their, on their magic abilities. But then they practice on the people in the Hole. So they're all up all the time and on the way back Kaiman stops and kind of gets lost staring at this alley which is the alley that whatever happened to him happened to him in so he kind of goes off into space there staring at it be and remembering seeing a figure off in the distance but we don't know if that figure is the sorcerer who did that to him or if maybe it's the person inside of him or it's really not sure but Kaiman can't walk past this alley without kind of stopping and staring because this is like the apex of his existence, really. I don't think apex was the right word there. But anyway, back over in the sorcerer's world, the big nose guy is going to go to his buddy's funeral, the guy that just came and just killed. And so apparently funerals is a place where you put on some silly shoes and you take an egg and you drop it into a barrel of goo that's coming from a funnel in the ceiling. It really makes no sense. He then goes up to N, who as far as I can tell is the leader of the sorcerers, and he's going to apologize for losing his partner. And, and all he could say is, Where are you running off to before you've even changed out of your funeral shoes? I mean, seriously, what am I even reading right now? And apparently here it's confirmed that when she broke his finger, she effectively, now he can't do magic anymore because he has a broken finger. Um, the mechanics... Uh, of this world are astonishingly silly. Anyway, back in the Hulk, Nikaido is taking Pork back to a restaurant or something and runs into Kaiman, who took a part-time job at the hospital because there's just not enough sorcerers to hunt in the Hulk right now. When a bunch of corpses come into the hospital looking like half-man, half-bug things, poorly transformed half-man, half-bug things, and they even comment on just how poorly done and uh, amateurish i want to say that i think the word was the magic that was used to transform these things was when nikaida goes back to a restaurant only to run into a very suspicious individual with a band-aid or something on his finger now keep in mind nikaida just broke the other guy's finger intentionally because she knew that that's how he casts magic or smoke or whatever this shit is now, this guy, sneaky, creepy motherfucker, shows up with his finger looking all crazy. I think it's a cage or a panty. I don't know. It's obvious he's a sorcerer, that's what I'm saying. So she immediately takes him inside, and she starts making him food. And she's, like, goading him, it seems like, with all this, oh, yeah, there's a new sorcerer in town, and he's an amateur, and his magic sucks, and his magic's so amateurish. And you're like, <laughs> this is awesome. She's gonna, like, get him worked up, and then... And then she's going to, like, get him to, like, try and cast magic. And then she's going to kick the shit out of him. Because, you know, she's smart and she figured it out the second this creepy, suspicious-looking sorcerer showed up on her, on her doorstep. At least that's what I thought was going to happen. I was wrong. Meanwhile, back in Sorcerer City, Big Nose Guy Fujita goes and gets a gun. And he's going to take the gun to the city and go get some revenge. When he gets to the door and the door's closed to him and he gets a message from N that says, if I catch you using a gun, I'll kill you myself. And it's just, and now the gun's gone. The gun's gone from the story, never to be seen again. It was literally just a throwaway gag. This is what I was talking about at the beginning when I said if I'm going to stop at every joke, and here I am stopping. But that's not the point. If I was going to stop at every joke or every story beat, we'd be here forever. Because this sh just pops up for literally a page or two and then is gone. Just for that one little throwaway gag of if I catch you with a gun, I'll kill you. But it's so funny and it's so effective. I can't help but stop every time and just be like, why? 
Why? Oh my god, why? It's borderline genius as far as comedy is concerned. I'm just... So anyway, Kaiman goes back to the restaurant and he finds Nikaido half transformed into a bug and the sorcerer's just kind of sitting on her because she's a complete fucking idiot and didn't realize that she was talking to the bug guy. Are you serious right now? And at this point, I'm like, oh God, how are we going to fix this? Like there's going to be a mechanic or something that we have to introduce because she's fucked up. She needs to be fixed at this point. She's literally got these little arms. And... Uh, yeah, so Kaiman murders the guy and poof, she's back to normal. No, we don't have to fix it because apparently consequences aren't a thing in this manga. Stakes don't really matter is what this is telling me at this point. Things are introduced, but they don't really have any effect. I thought there was going to be stakes and tension. There aren't, or at least... This is setting up a precedent at this point. Don't let yourself get too worked up in what's going on here. Because it probably doesn't matter anyway. But anyway, Fujita is going to go visit it. <laughs> and we find this motherfucker sitting on a mushroom in a field of mushrooms. Smoking something out of a couple of jars, I think. And he gives him a tablet made out of teeth. When you open it, you control it with joysticks made of mushrooms. I don't even know what is going on right now. Have I mentioned just how ridiculous this manga is at this point? I mean, but flash over the hole and we realize, we find out that Kaiman is plagued by nightmares of this thing inside of him. In his nightmare, he's vomiting violently into a toilet when he essentially throws up the guy inside and leaves him dead on the floor, or at least that's how it appears, while the guy inside just walks away. I don't know. At which point he wakes up and we realize that that was all just a dream. But now we know that this also affects him to the point where he literally has nightmares about it. But right then, Kaiman runs into a little sorcerer with a skull mask named Ibisu. And... Uh, he rips off the mask and it's this little girl. So he shoved, whatever, it doesn't matter. She's a sorcerer. Shoves her head into his mouth and we find out right then that the head inside of Kaiman recognizes Ibisu. How, why, we don't know. Because right then, Fujita is going to summon up a door and he's going to jump through. And he's going to save her by pulling her head out of Kaiman's mouth, ripping her whole fucking face off at the time. Sorry. Anyway. Now, enter Shin and Noi. Oh my gosh. And, oh my god, I love these two. This is by far the best version of, this is a duo, two-man, team-up, and we're gonna wear suits and masks. Think the Umbrella Academy, but done way better. Not that there's anything wrong with the Umbrella Academy. And yes, I know that Noi technically doesn't wear a suit, but it's the same vibe that you get from these two that you would get from the, you know, this. But anyway, they go on a killing spree and they're going to take bets as to who can kill the most people. But anyway, I'm going to stop right now for a second and talk about the art. Because the art in this is literally the whole reason why I picked up this manga. I mean, yes, there were a whole bunch of other things about this manga that interested me. There's a whole, whole list of things. But so did other manga. I looked into a bunch of them when I was creating that short list. But then you go to the bookstore and you go through the bookstore and you start picking these things up and you just start flipping through and trying to get an overall vibe from the little books that you're picking up in your hand. So why does this particular one get moved up in line over top of all those other ones? Well, it would be the art. It's just so dirty. I don't know how else to explain it. It is, there's something... It has a feel to it that the others just didn't. I've heard it described as bad. I read somewhere that somebody said the art isn't good. And once you get past the art or get used to the art, then you can get into the manga. Like the art was some kind of hurdle that you had to get past in order to 
be able to enjoy the story. And I don't find that to be the case. I find it to be one of, if not the biggest draw to reading this, because if I'm going to read a picture book, <laughs> literally, that's what it is. And I, I'm, and I have to spend hours and hours and hours on end reading a book filled with pictures. Well, then I want those pictures to look like this. I mean, this is just phenomenal. My eyes and my brain loves it. Uh, I think it's great. It's so visually interesting. I, I can't help but just pause and look at some of it. It's so, just so good. But anyway, now Shin and Noi are off to dinner. And I thought, you know, like a diner. That seems appropriate. They just murdered a bunch of people. We're going to go have dinner. And they'll sit down in like a little diner or something. Maybe even Nikaido's diner. And then we'll get this like scene of them eating around Kaiman and Nikaido. But Kaiman and Nikaido don't know that these are evil sorcerers. And the evil sorcerers don't know that these are the, the guys that will eventually become like their enemies. You know, one of those scenes. That's what I'm expecting. No. No. <laughs> no, we're off to it. We're not off to just any dinner. We're off to a dinner party. And all of the sorcerers are invited to the dinner party. Do you just go to the dinner party? Of course not. It's a dinner party. You get dressed up. You go put your fanciest suit on that you've got. And Fujita's going to show up with Ibisu. And poor Ibisu's got her whole face bandaged up because, you know, it was just ripped off. Oh my goodness, hold on. And by the way, Bisu ordered like a custom dress to wear, but she can't put it on because, you know, she has no face. And <laughs> Fujita doesn't know how to put it on her because he's an idiot. So she goes with this half messed up looking dress to the party with her tit hanging out. I mean, it is, I don't even know. To be honest, at this point, nothing in this manga should even be funny, but I can't help but laughing especially I don't know if this makes me a bad person but especially anytime Ibisu's on on in on the page and holy shit, noise a woman and I honestly did not see that one coming and I'm gonna call it right now there are some people out there with some fetishes that are really liking this right now I mean they are in love with this woman I'm sure this has to effectively be their favorite character at this point. I mean, if the resident evil woman got step on me mommy memes, what the f do we give to this chick? But at this point, N asks Big Mommy Noi to heal Ibisu because she might know something. But since her fingers were cut off, she can't cast magic. And since her face was ripped off, she's out of her mind now. At which point he invites some shapeshifters to the ball or the dinner party or whatever. And they show up looking like weird strappy dress versions of Kaiman and Nikaido. And this is, I wonder at this point about Q Hayashida and her, uh, hmm fetishes we'll call it because this feels like we're just parading around with like bondage masks and these people in their strappy you know with the the, the big tit nakaido but then your big buff dude with the lizard head and they're both wearing bondage tutus it is very um questionable or very exciting depends on how you look at it i guess but this is going to backfire or something and they're going to attack N. To which N just blows some smoke at him and turns him into mushrooms. Because what else would he turn him into? This is the Mushroom King. But anyway, back in the hole, Kaiman and Nikaido are looking for this sorcerer named the Needle. Because, I don't know, there was maybe, if, if there might have, reasons don't really matter in this manga. People just do things and you just kind of roll with it. You know, somebody said something about the needle. So now we're going to go find the needle. It doesn't matter. And on the way there, Nikaido and Kaiman are going to get jumped by some thug guys in like this tent city thing. It doesn't really matter. But Nikaido's going to go all Bruce Lee on their asses. 
and so far I've raved about the art and the humor in this manga, but I really haven't mentioned the action. And the action's really, really good as well. Like, it's drawn just really, really well, and it tracks. By that I mean you can follow it shockingly well. Like, instead of some things, some things can feel crazy and bombastic and you're like, whoa, like it goes from one panel to the next and you're like, wait, whoa, 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 hold up, what just happened? This doesn't have that. You goes from one panel to the next and you know exactly how you got from point A to point B. It tracks well. But anyway, they find the sorcerer and Kaiman puts his head in his mouth and they find out he's not the one. So Kaiman's going to murder him, but before he does so, the guy offers to use his acupuncture to make fix his face and make him look normal again or something like that while also telling their fortune so he does the acupuncture to fix his face and the fortune that he gives him is you will have heart trouble soon and death wow that escalated quickly from heart trouble to death but secondly heart trouble we all know that he doesn't mean heart trouble he means you're gonna run into shin soon and shin's gonna your ass up Ooh, i totally forgot shin's weapon of choice is a hammer and it's not like you know a ball bean hammer or even a sledgehammer no it's a claw hammer and he's and he fights with the claw end of the claw hammer i meant to put that in earlier in the video it's okay it doesn't matter but yes me it's wicked it's brutal this video is gonna be a mess it's okay though but anyway, he gets his acupuncture, we pull the acupuncture off, and big surprise, his face stayed the same. It didn't get fixed from the acupuncture. The end of the book. But wait, there's more! Because we get an extra, what is it? Extra evil. And lucky us, it's exclusive to this book. So what do we learn in the extra evil? Let's see. We see that sorcerers remove their masks in order to go through these doors and be given new masks and if you're like an established sorcerer you get to go through door number one and if you're like i have no idea if you're unestablished or if you're not official or if you're not i don't know why some people have to line up at a door and others just get to go right through it really isn't made clear but shin and shin and noi go right through and they take their masks off in order to get new masks they go before the devil and the devil makes them new masks that look literally identical to the old masks so it was kind of pointless and fujita goes waits in line to go through the other door just to be basically scolded and tortured it's just an excuse to make fun of fujita and 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 nothing happens i mean don't get me wrong it's funny but that's why it's just an extra evil because it literally it, it didn't mean shit. but it's a fun little read so i recommend you read it anyway this was fun I mean, this was a lot of fun. I was genuinely shocked at how much fun this really was. I just so much more fun than I expected it would be. I don't even know what to say. This was great. I can't help but give it like, I don't know, like a nine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and say nine, at least for the, at least for the start, because boy, it starts off with a bang. It's a banger of a beginning. Anyway, everybody, don't forget about the Discord. The link is in the description below. And if for some reason you are interested in supporting me and this channel, there is a Patreon, and that link is also in the description. And of course, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.